Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here for my first uh, ever Outlook where I present. Uh, I hope I'm up to the challenge. Clearly not. <laughs> Just very briefly, I'm here today speaking on behalf of NUTS and I will talk as though NUTS are a homogenous sector. But like horticulture and indeed like all of agriculture, uh, we are made up of many separate industries. The members of ANIC are before you. Um, but I would just like to put a plug in that I think ANIC hopefully is one small step towards a uh, credible single voice for horticulture. Horticulture has been bedeviled by its lack of profile, its inability to speak uh, cohesively to government and elsewhere. And uh, I think it's one of the greatest challenges that, uh, that face us. And uh, perhaps if there were more subgroups like ANIC and like OSVEG, um, uh, perhaps we'd be better able to come together. The nun industry is a little bit like a teenager. We are young, we are fast growing, we are willful, we think the world revolves around us, but we are outward looking and we have huge potential. And I want to talk to you today about some of that potential. One of the most important things about the nut industry is its production efficiency and its production growth. Production has grown 50% in the last five years uh, as we, as an industry, were better able to adapt and to adopt overseas technology for most of the nuts, although for my nut, the macadamia industry, we've actually had to develop that technology and, the, and that capability ourselves and then export it to our competitors. But it has taken time and now, across most of the nuts that Annex represents, we have some of the highest yields per hectare in the world. We are some of the most productive nut producers in the world. But some of that productivity growth that we have seen is due to the new plantings that have been undertaken and as the trees come into maturity and as they reach their full productive potential, it's sort of given us a, a somewhat false sense of productivity growth. But some of that productivity growth is real. And one of the main drivers of that productivity growth has been uh, labour efficiency. We are one of the most highly recognised uh, horticultural industries, indeed agricultural industries in Australia. Most of my members would have less than well, one, one and a half full-time equivalent uh, uh, employees. We do have world-class technology and practices, not only on farm, but through our processing and pa packaging technology as well. Much of that has been imported from overseas nut industries, but again, much of it we have developed ourselves. Um, one thing that's often not talked about in terms of, um, of uh, production efficiency and successful industries is the roles that industry organisations and representational bodies play. All of the nun industries have well organised, well represented and reasonably well resourced industry bodies and I think that has been quite an important part in allowing us to, uh, to achieve the growth we have and particularly uh, the success in, in, in export that we have. We are also a, a very capital intensive industry, the nun industry. We've had very good access to capital in the past through tax concessions, through managed investment schemes and the like. Um, and now we're beginning to look overseas, uh, uh, an issue that was raised yesterday at Outlook. Um, in the almond industry, uh, many of those MIS schemes were picked up by overseas interests. So we are looking overseas and it is one of the challenges that face us, whether we can maintain that investment in a highly capitalised industry. And just to give you some indication of uh, the production growth across the nut sector, uh, you can see that it's mainly made up of almonds and macadamias, but uh, 
you can see that walnuts are making a late run and I think uh, they're definitely a nut to watch. I think we'll see uh, great interest there. There are about, um, um, and poor old hazelnuts don't even rate, there's about 130 hectares of hazelnuts in Australia at the moment, but Ferrero have just announced they've bought 2,000 hectares that they will be putting into hazelnut production. So um, there is a great deal of growth. We're also a sustainable industry. There is wide use, perhaps one of the highest uses of integrated pest management across horticulture, uh, to the extent that the Australian pecan industry is entirely pesticide free. There are no use of pesticides. Um, uh, the macadamia industry has a, a very well developed uh, uh, pest scout network and we practice area wide pest management um, not perhaps on the scale of uh, viticulture, but certainly up there. And we have one of the lowest uses of pesticides across Australian horticulture. We also have, uh, and I'm using the term sustainability in its broadest sense, um, because of our high value, we have sustainability in some of our um, post farm gate uh, uh, costs. If you look at a 20-foot container for nuts, that's worth about $150,000, a 20-foot container full of nuts. For wheat, it's about $5,000. Yet the transport costs from farm gate to port are roughly the same. So we have uh, some good efficiencies and sustainability there. As a long-lived evergreen uh, perennial, or for macadamias, but as a long-lived perennial for all the uh, nut crops, uh, there is great potential there in terms of our carbon sequestration and opportunities there and, and uh, certainly one of my members, uh, Suncoast Gold, generates the power necessary to run its processing plant by cogeneration by burning the nutshell that comes from that processing. But perhaps one of our greatest areas of, uh, of uh, sustainability and as Vanessa said, uh, an area close to my heart as a previous CEO of Irrigation Australia Limited is our water use of finish efficiency. And you can see their gross margins per megalitre up in the order of around $2,000 per megalitre compared to perhaps $200 per megalitre for much of broad acre agriculture. So highly efficient and one of the things that has given us a bit of a competitive advantage uh, is the is our ability to um, buy water at market rates due to some of the reforms in the Australian water industry, irrigation industry. We are also a highly innovative industry that uses R&D. Nuts are investing in marketing and R&D at one of the highest rates in horticulture. So say my industry, macadamias, has an effective R&D levy rate of two and a half percent of the first point of value, first point of sale value. Uh, I think that's about the second or third highest across all the levies in horticulture and, and probably in, in agriculture. So we have invested heavily in innovation and, and research and development. There's a, even though we are already highly mechanised, the almond industry is, is uh, one of the major funders of a large uh, robotics in horticulture program that is being funded uh, through HAL. And just on that, I would like to put in a little plug here that having spent close to 30 years involved in Australian horticulture, I firmly believe that Horticulture Australia is probably one of, if not the most important development for Australian horticulture. The improvement in our capacity as an industry, in the capacity of peak bodies, in our research and development, in our marketing effort, since we had access to the HAL model has been profound and sustained. And I would urge any from government in the audience um, to think carefully about not only maintaining it but to, be, to strengthening that model. That's not to say they can't be a very frustrating body to deal with sometimes. <laughs> Um, we also have, particularly in macadamias, but across many of the Australian nut industries, a strong investment in breeding. About a quarter of our $2 million annual R&D budget in macadamias goes into our breeding program. And because we 
are the only country that macadamias are indigenous to. We have the country of origin gene pool and that's a huge uh, competitive advantage. We've invested heavily in health research and promotion and I'll talk a little bit about that later and also in new product development. New product development is one of the key indicators of a growing and healthy industry. Our new product launches across tree nuts increased 17 per cent in 09-10 compared with 07-08. Uh, mainly in bakery, cereals, confectionery and ice cream, but across, uh, across many categories. And tree nuts, as I say, are perhaps the only product that can be found in up to eight aisles of the supermarket, uh, and I list them there. This is an enviable position, but it has come through a sustained and significant investment in new product development. I mentioned briefly before our investment in, uh, in health research. In 2003, the Australian nut industries established Nuts for Life. It is a nutrition communication initiative established by the entire supply chain of the Australian nut industry. I think, to my knowledge, it's probably one of the only uh, research programs in Australia that is funded by the Australian producers, the Australian value chain, and even the importers of nuts into Australia. All contribute to Nuts for Life and uh, its aim is to provide useful, accurate and up-to-date information on the nutritional importance of tree nuts in the diet. And I say I think it is a great example of industry innovation, supply chain cooperation and leadership. Three things that I think the Australian nut industry excels in. And if I can uh, just show you, we monitor the effectiveness of of this, the commercial sector do not invest in programs like this unless they can see a clear return on their investment. And I think this shows you that since its inception in 2003, we have been able to show a sustained increase in both the volume and the value of the domestic consumption of tree nuts in Australia. And our latest success and we do take some credit for this, is the profile that nuts received in the new uh, Australian Dietary Guidelines. These guidelines recommend a 350% increase in the consumption of nuts. Now, were the Australian public to respond to that, um, it would consume the entire Australian nut <laughs> production and we would no longer be exporting. But um, this has come again through a, these, these dietary guidelines are based on 55,000 peer-reviewed scientific papers. So despite what the red meat industry might have to say about them, they are credible and they are science-based and they are the future. The Australian nut industry is globally competitive. <coughs> we are collectively, and I have to say that because Tanya's in the room, um, the largest uh, uh, horticultural export. Um, while citrus may be individually, um, as I was saying to Tanya earlier, I'd keep an eye on almonds, uh, they're moving very quickly. But it is, uh, 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 what citrus has done is fantastic. What we want to see is all of Australian horticulture getting behind export and realising that potential. But I do want to make a point that since the negotiation of the FTA with the USA in 2006, the Australian nut industry has had effectively no tariff protection of any kind. Yet despite that, we have grown both our domestic consumption and market share and our export uh, uh, share as well. And I think that the reason for this is it has bred a mentality of self-reliance. And so that when that FTA came in, the uh, pistachio and almond industries probably had $4 million wiped off the value of their industries overnight. But the industry didn't even request government assistance, nor were we given any, because it's part of a culture of self-reliance. And there are enormous potential um, for, uh, 
for growth in that. Um, and here you can see that nuts are Australia, over $200 million worth of, uh, of exports in 2011. <clears throat> this is backed by very strong global category growth. Consumption of tree nuts globally grew 8.5%, uh, a compound annual growth rate over the nine years to 2009, and there's huge benefit uh, growth uh, across most markets. I'll move quickly through this, but you can see both production and consumption of tree nuts globally uh, are well aligned and continuing to grow strongly. And uh, like we've heard so often today, uh, growth in China is one of the outstanding features of our industry as well. You can see almond production there, uh, almond imports into China there from Australia. Um, sorry, these are globally um, and through pistachios and, and walnuts as well. There has been some talk about uh, China's growth in production of nuts, um, but you only have to look at what happened in the hazelnut, uh, the, sorry, the walnut industry where China produced about 270,000 uh, tonnes uh, domestically. They consume all of that and import another 90,000 tonnes of walnuts. So there is talk about China becoming the largest macadamia producer in the world by 2025. Uh, we welcome that. If that can turn con Chinese consumers on to macadamias, um, that's a bigger market for us to supply and we're confident they'll still import. I didn't want to leave without, though, talking about some of the future challenges. I mentioned briefly before attracting capital investment. We are a highly capital intensive industry. It is one of the reasons that we can compete globally. A lot of the developing countries, they may have cheap labour, but we're a highly mechanised industry and our processing and value adding requires capital investment and uh, they don't have easy access to that sort of capital investment. Unfortunately, neither do we to the extent that we used to. And uh, we will certainly be taking up the challenge that was raised yesterday about looking overseas for investment in our industries. The potential is there, the return on the investment is there, um, but unfortunately Australian investors uh, don't seem to appreciate that. Our biggest challenge without any doubt is getting access to new markets. The production growth that we have seen and that we can forecast to continue has got to go somewhere. This is a hugely critical and urgent issue for us. And despite what Minister Emerson said yesterday, uh, progress has not been fast enough. The Australian government is not approaching this issue with enough vigour, with enough uh, aggressiveness, and nor is it working in partnership with industry enough, despite what uh, Minister Ludwig said. Uh, our competitors, uh, Chile, New Zealand, have much greater involvement of their horticultural industries, their agricultural industries, in the negotiation of market access than we do. And we really want to see a change in that. And of course, uh, uh, climate change. Um, the graph that was shown by uh, BOM yesterday that saw those, that big blue streak down the east coast of, uh, of Australia with greater than average rainfall has had profound effects on my industry since the Australia Day long weekend. We've probably seen 20% of the value of our industry wiped off by that storm and subsequent wet weathers. And then you saw the very red streak down the middle where the almonds and, uh, are growing with less than average rainfall. And uh, despite their water use efficiency, those sorts of droughts are going to have, uh, if they continue in their severity and unpredictability, then going to have a profound effect on us. So just in conclusion, what I wanted to say was, I think it was uh, Paul Morris talked about <coughs> some of the things necessary for industries to survive and prosper into the future. He said they had to be strong in R&D and innovation. That's a tick for the Australian nut industry. He said they had to have incre increased intensity and productivity. That's a tick for the Australian nut industry. He said they had to be able to attract foreign capital. We've started to do that, we'll continue to do that. They had to have an Asian focus. We have been dealing with Asia and had joint ventures in China for close to 20 years in the macadamia industry. The other nut industries are not far behind. I would add that to continue to, uh, to contribute to Australia's uh, agricultural economy, we need to be 
active in regional economies, nut industries are, across every state in, state in Australia. We're internationally competitive, we're value adding, and uh, as I say, the future for Australian nut industries is very rosy. Thank you very much for listening.